Hey guys, this is Elise. Today's topic on COVID-19 mental health chats is how to talk with a child about their grief or tough feelings through our current limitations and conditions. This is a common question I receive from parents in dealing with grief and losses of all kinds, especially in helping their child transition and adjust and move forward so that the child can develop optimally given the circumstances. The information I'll be sharing in this video is prepared from my training and experience in developmental models of therapy with sensitivity to children and individuals who have neurodevelopmental disorders, as well as the training I received and experience I have in treating grief and complicated types of grief. This video is also shared on the basic assumption that the primary caregiver or parent has a secure and healthy attachment with their children. Okay, so let's get started. First, begin on the child's level. Children process information according to their own abilities at different ages. As a parent, you very likely know more about your child than anyone else on the planet. Please use this generic guide to tailor the information for your own relationship with your children. For example, one parent may begin the conversation with a very simple sentence of, can you point to which emojis you feel like these days? Another parent might process more in detail with, mommy wants to know how you're feeling about being at home all day every day. Mommy feels so happy to be with you and your siblings so much more, but also I'm a little concerned that you might be unhappy. On the other hand, a different parent may begin by referring to a child's ability to recollect family history by saying something like, you know how grandpa has not been feeling very good in a long time these days? and segue into talking about the circumstances and what's going on. Second, let the child demonstrate where they are emotionally and mentally about the situation by asking questions. Sometimes, let's be honest, adults can talk too much. It can overwhelm the child. Provide some very basic information and then let your child's questions guide you. It's important to demonstrate reflective listening and model it for your child. So after your child says something or asks a question, you can ask, let me see if I heard you right. Are you feeling sad that you aren't able to celebrate your best friend's birthday with him and eat cake together? And in that way, reword their question. It's helpful to address both the question and the child's underlying feelings. Try to be open-ended so that your child can practice using their words more to express how they feel and ask any questions they haven't quite figured out how to put words to just yet. Third, encourage your child to do a little reflective listening back to you with their feedback. Ask your child to summarize what they're thinking, you're saying in response to each of their questions. It's okay for the conversation to feel slower your child is processing things as best as they can. Their brain doesn't fully develop physically until they're 25 years old, at least from a medical model perspective. They're a lot behind your level of understanding and processing, even though they might be able to run so zippity fast around the house. Their feedback gives you a chance to clarify anything or use simpler language that fits them. Fourth, give scheduled and structured opportunities for the child to express their feelings. This helps children know there is a time and place that is dependable and reliable, as well as safe and prepared for them to express how they feel. It's also helpful to you as a parent to maintain some structure at home by having this type of space. So, for example, when a child seems to be acting out, you can ask them, are you feeling a certain kind of way about being stuck in the house every day? If they confirm, you can remind them that they'll have a mom-daughter chat date after dinner where they can share anything and everything, but right now it's time to do schoolwork, just for example. A child's feelings can be complex and frightening, especially when they have a hard time understanding it themselves. It's important that your child has opportunities to comfortably express their feelings during one-on-one -on -one time or family chats designated after dinner time a couple times a week. It doesn't have to be after dinner time, but you get the gist at some designated point. The other days of the week, you can structure other family activities or free time for the child to engage in games or playtime. Parents can help by listening, validating your child's feelings, and sharing the things that you're trying to cope with your own feelings. 
Fifth, use other resources. Help your child identify their core people. It might be their best friends who they can have FaceTime playtime with or have a Zoom party with a group of their friends. It might be their after school tutor who they think is very pretty and nice or their school teacher who they have always felt safe with or a relative in the family. Helping your child identify people with whom they can be comfortable sharing how they feel reminds them that they don't have to cope by themselves. Lastly, use your child's existing talents and gifts. Your child may be very creative artistically or musically. Maybe he or she can recite and dramatize stories very well. Or they can create stories and author them with lots of imagery. Use and encourage their gifts since they are comfortable and familiar. Those opportunities are great for expressing feelings and can provide opportunities for dialogue. Children have wonderful imaginations and they will create their own answers when left to their own devices. Acknowledging their thoughts and feelings helps stabilize their experiences, gives permission to exploring with you and learning about their own process with your support. Thanks for being awesome parents. Hope these practical steps help you navigate some of the conversations at home about COVID-19 and our situation. Comment, like, subscribe to connect with me here at COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. Let me know what you'd like to hear more of and I'll try my best to gather the most practical information for you to easily implement for self-care and care for your family. Check out the links below for access to therapist directories if you need additional professional support. See you next time on COVID-19 Mental Health Chats.